What is up, guys? JT Anime Nerd here, coming at you today. We bring you all that nerdy goodness. Today, we continue with part two of my Mortal Kombat rewritten edition in prologue. If you guys haven't seen part one, and I recommend that you do, otherwise, you're not really going to understand what's happening here. With all that said and done, enjoy the video. Hours later, in the Botan jungle just outside of the Wuxi Academy, Liu Kang trains vigorously. Upset at his denial to become Kung Lao's student and enter the Order of Light. But Raicho then approaches Liu Kang, as Liu Kang strikes at a tree with such force that it breaks and is knocked down, creating a loud crashing sound as it hits the ground. Not taking rejection so well, are you? asked Boraicho. I simply do not understand. I've worked hard all these years, and yet they still see me as an outsider. A street urchin, Liu Kang replied. Nah, it's not that, Bo Raicho rebuttaled. Then why? Liu Kang asked. I've mastered every class, every fighting style, followed all the rules. So why do I continue to be denied? Whenever Shu Jinko makes a decision like that, there's always a purpose for it, Bo Raicho says. He sees that you have a destiny. But as, a monk of the, as the, but as a monk of the Order of Light isn't part of it. If that is so, then what is my purpose besides being an orphan? Asked Liu. We all have our destiny, Liu. It's only a matter of time, said Boracho before taking his leave. Liu Kang continues his aggressive training, breaking trees and logs bit by bit. Until all of a sudden, Liu hears what sounds like a scream of pain coming from deeper inside the jungle. Curious, Liu decides to venture into the deep, deep parts of Botan jungle, venturing forth only to en end up in the midst, midst, midst of the ancient ruins is within. Liu Kang looks around, hopeful that he'll will be able to find the source of that scream, only to see what appears to be a black mass of smoke mass with smoke coming off of it from a distance. Liu runs up to what he's just seen, only to be horrified at the sight of a charred body. As horrified as he is, Liu Kang notices that the dead person's teeth are abnormally large, and its skull is different from that of a normal human. Suddenly, an explosion is unleashed from inside one of the ruined temples, blasting the stone door through and spreading the rubble all around the courtyard of the ruins that Liu was standing in. Much to Liu Kang's horror, a creature with large fangs and an oddly shaped head, and, and what appeared to be two sharp bone-like blades protruding from the front of it, his arms on, arms is on fire, screaming in pain. Just when Liu didn't think things could get any more horrific, a hand emerges from the flames and then pushes into the creature's back through its flesh. The hand then rips out the creature's spine with its skull on the top causing the hollow body to drop to the ground. From the flames emerge what appeared to be a ninja in yellow, who then crushed the spine with the creature's skull attached in his hand, using flames to burn earn it to ash as he grasped it in his crushing hand. The ninja then looks forward and notices Liu Kang, angered at what he's just seen. You! shouted Liu, Liu Kang. What have you done? The ninja in yellow slowly begins to approach Liu, Liu Kang. My fight is not with you, monk, said the ninja. If anything, you should be wary for your academy, for these few dangerous creatures are only the beginning. The only dangerous creature I see is you, Liu Kang replied, taking his fighting stance. Very well, but do not say I never warned you, the ninja said as he takes his fighting stance. After gameplay, Liu Kang and the ninja exchange blow after blow, until suddenly more creatures from earlier arrive to ambush Liu and the, and the ninja. The leading creature began speaking in a language that Liu Kang could not understand. What did he say? asked Liu. It's Tarkatan. He's ordering our execution, the ninja replied. Be ready, monk. This will not be easy. During gameplay, we start are playing as Liu Kang. After his fight, we then play as the ninja in yellow. Afterwards, Liu and the ninja work together to defeat and kill the last of what the ninja called the Tarkatans. 
when and everything seemed over, the silence would be broken by the sound of screams coming from the Wuxi Academy. The Academy! It's under attack! Liu exclaimed as he ran toward the Academy. The ninja looks on as Liu Kang runs toward the Academy, which appears to be in flames due to the rising smoke coming from the Academy's direction. Moments earlier, while Liu, while Liu Kang was in the jungle, we see the monks, graduates, and students celebrate this year's tournament with feast and festivities. We then see a robed figure with a large circular straw hat be given some food, and begins to eat the food using chopsticks. The robed figure then decides to eat in a corner, leaning against the wall. Suddenly, Boraicho approaches the robed figure and decides to lean against the wall next to him while eating a plate of food in his hand. So, how is your young disciple? asked the robed man. Well, you know how kids get. He'll recover from this, Boraicho replied. After all, losing is a part of life, and I feel like Kung Lao. Liu's known victory all too often. I heard she... Shu Jinko offered for you to take o over the Order of Light, the robe man said. Yeah, but I turned him down. My students need my full attention, and besides, I got a reputation to uphold, Boraicho replied. Who else is going to be known as the Academy Drunk? <laughs> Boraicho laughs at his own words, but then suddenly shows an expression of great seriousness. That being said... Even I know better than to think you just show up for a simple celebration, Boracho claimed. I know you all too well, Lord Raiden. The robed figure, now known as Raiden, looks up, revealing his glowing eyes to Boracho from under his hat. So why don't you tell me, what exactly is it you are doing here? Boracho asked. Before Raiden could answer, a flash of blue light appeared in the middle of, of the Wuxi Academy courtyard. The light then expanded into what appeared to be a portal that showed a desert wasteland on the other side. From that portal appeared a small army of Tarkatans, led by what appeared to be a Tarkatan dressed differently than the others, and was shouting orders in their native language. One by one, the Tarkatans began killing students, teachers, and monks all around leading them to defend themselves to the death. Meanwhile, Kung Lao and Kun Jin enter their door orms for a moment to retrieve their main weapons, Kung Lao with his bladed hat and Kung Jin with his bow and arrows. As the Tarkatans kill many monks, Boraicho and Shujinko begin battling the Tarkatans. We then enter gameplay to which we first control all Shujinko, and then after his fight, we then play as Boraicho. After gameplay, Shujinko and Boraicho continue to hold off most of the Tarkatans, as Boraicho looks around and sees monks dying one by one. Boraicho then t looks toward Raiden, uh, as he is still holding the plate of food and chopstick in his hand hands. You planning on helping out or what? asks Boraicho while still fighting. Suddenly, Raiden throws away the plate of food and then raises his ha right hand to the sky, summoning a bolt of lightning that would strike him. The bolt of lightning would then change Raiden's attire, revealing his true identity and readying himself to fight. Return to the far reaches of Outworld from whence you came, shouted Raiden. Combined with his martial arts movements, Raiden shoots lightning bolt after lightning bolt out of his hands, instantly killing many of the Tarkatan grunts, while a few others that are stronger fall to the ground. Three Tarkatan grunts then approach Raiden, knowing full well how much of a threat he truly is. And so we then begin gameplay as Raiden, defeating three different Tarkatan grunts. After gameplay, the Tarkatans begin go going for the members of the academy who can't fight, but are killed and stopped by Kung Lao's hat, slicing through many Tarkatan grunts, catching notice of the Tarkatan leader. Kung Lao retrieves his hat, revealing his nephew Kung Jin beside him with bow in hand and ready to kill the Tarkatan invaders. Kung Lao and Kung Jin approach a group of Tarkatan grunts and begin the battle. We would first play as Kung Lao, defeating three Tarkatans, followed by Kung Jin, who would defeat three more. After gameplay, more Tarkatans enter from the portal, leading Raiden to summon a lightning wall to keep the Tarkatans at bay. I can't hold it for long! Evacuate the academy! Quickly! 
Raiden, ex Raiden exclaimed. As the Wuxi Academy civilians began to evacuate the temple alongside the monks that had the power to protect them, Raiden, Kung Lao, Kung Jin, and Bo Raicho look in shock as they notice that Shu Jinko is on the other side of the lightning wall with the Tarkatan invaders. What are you doing? shouted Raiden. The time has come, Lord Raiden. Protect the students and protect Earthrealm, Shu Jinko says with pride. The Tarkatans on the other side of the lightning wall then speak in their native language, believing that fresh meat has come to their doorstep. Shujinko then easily fights and holds off many of the Tarkatan grunts coming from the portal, well, revealing that, that they have sorely underestimated Shujinko. Sadly, however, the group failed to notice that the Tarkatan leader was on their side of the wall, along with a few more of the strongest Tarkatan grunts alongside him. Just great, said an annoyed Kung Jin. The three strongest Tarkatan grunts attack, leading Kung Lao, Kung Jin, and Bo Rai Cho to take them on, leaving Raiden wide open for the Tarkatan leader to attack. Just as the Tarkatan leader attempts to charge at Raiden in order to bring down the lightning wall, Liu Kang appears and attacks him with his flying kick attack, pushing the Tarkatan leader back. The Tarkatan leader then stands up in anger, but then begins to smell something familiar about Liu Kang. Dragon spawn, uttered the Tarkatan leader in English. They know our language, Liu Kang said to himself, ready to fight. After gameplay, Liu would receive some cuts from the Tarkatan leader's bone blades, weakening him and bring, slightly bringing him to his knees. Just as the Tarkatan leader was about to strike the final blow, Kung Jin got in the way and suffered a mortal, gash-like wound across his chest much to Liu Kang's shock and horror. As Kung Jin fell, Liu would catch him before he hit the ground, while shedding tears for his friend. Shocked, Kung Lao just stood in place, not believing at the sight he has just seen. Why? Why? shouted Liu Kang. Why else? <coughs> because you're my best friend, Kung Jin said, before he dies of blood loss. As rain begins to pour down, and everyone is in shock from Kung Jin's death, Liu Kang breaks down and screams in sorrow for his friend. No! 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 Shouts Liu Kang as he places his left hand on Kung Jin's wound to keep him from bleeding out, not wanting to accept that it's already too late. Please! Please! Please, Jin! Suddenly... The Tarkatan leader begins to laugh hysterically at Liu's pain and mocks him in his native language, enraging Kung Lao. As Kung Lao is about to charge at the Tarkatan leader with tears and hatred in his eyes, Liu Kang's rage releases an aura from him and causes his left hand to generate a flame, stopping Kung Lao in his tracks in surprise. Realizing what was happening, Liu Kang immediately used his flame to cauterize Kung Jin's wound. Seeing this, and noticing what has just happened, the Darkatan leader was immediately about to kill Liu Kang, until what looked like a kunai wrapped in with rope entered the back of the Darkatan leader's head and out of his forehead. With one pull, the Darkatan leader's head was ripped off and caught in the right hand by none other than the ninja in yellow. Reduced to nothing but a head, the Tarkatan leader begins to slowly die. <laughs> uttered the Tarkatan leader as he died. The ninja in yellow would then and use his flames to burn the head down to ash in the grasp of his hand. As the Tarkatan horde sees the death of their leader, they attempt to try and break through the lightning wall. But Shujinko decides to make the ultimate sacrifice and use his chi to push back the horde or of Tarkatan's back to the poor portal, and then follows them to ensure they cannot cross back over. Shujinko, no! shouts Raiden. As Shujinko, oh, oh, looks back at Raiden, as if saying goodbye, as the portal closes. The moment the portal closed, Raiden would bring down the lightning wall. Kung Lao would then run to his nephew and take him into his arms. Jin! Kung Lao shouted. Jin, wake up! Jin! Jin! The next morning, 
Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Borai Cho, and the Ninja in Yellow are all waiting within the Wuxi Academy main temple. Raiden then appears in a flash of lightning. I am sorry. There is nothing I can do for Kung Jin. He is already gone, Raiden explains. However, there is a way to bring him back from even death itself. Kung Lao then scoffs at Raiden's words in anger. Call me crazy, but I don't think it's a coincidence that these things showed up the moment you arrived, claimed Kung Lao. In fact, you didn't see him to join in the fight until later, or after enjoying a bunch of food. Am I wrong? So why would I trust the man who couldn't even protect my nephew or Master Shujinko? I understand your anger, but if you allow me to explain- Understand, Kung Lao interrupted. Kung Lao angrily walks up to Raiden and grabs him by the collar. What could you possibly understand? Kung Lao, that's enough, shouted Boracho. But Master- uh, Kung Lao rebuttaled. Show some respect to our founder, the God of Thunder. Lord Raiden, Lorai Cho reply. Raiden, asked Kung Lao. The god of thunder spoke of in our legends? That's impossible, said Kung Lao as he let go of Raiden. You'll find that there is much in all of the realms that is possible, O Kung Lao, Raiden stated. Realms, Liu Kang asked. Six known in total, but there are infinitely more. The ninja stated. Well, I appreciated the help. I don't think I ever got your name, Liu, who claimed. My name is long gone from the winds of history. But for simplicity's sake, you may refer to me as Scorpion, replied the ninja in yellow. If I'm not mistaken, your attire seems reminiscent of the old Shirai Ryu clan, an ancient clan of ni Ninja that rival the Lin Kuei clan. Am I wrong? Asked Boraicho. Scorpion glares at Boraicho for a moment, creating an incredible tension. Whether or not that is true is irrelevant, Raiden explains. What matters is why this invasion happened. Invasion? Asked Kung Lao. You mean Outworld, Boraicho stated. Yes, the time is drawing near. For the tournament to begin, Raiden replies. Tournament? What madness is this? Kung Lao asked. The madness we speak of is a tournament that decides the fate of the realms. A competition to decide if a realm was to be conquered or protected. But right, Aicho stated. It is a tournament known as Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat? Liu Kang asked. Wait. I remember a mention of a tournament, and in the story of the great Kung Lao, Kung Lao stated, Is this the tournament in the legend references? Yes. The great Kung Lao was trained personally by Lord Raiden, and prepared to face Earthrealm's greatest traitor, Boraicho explained. Earthrealm is what we refer to as this realm, the realm of humanity, Raiden states. Only I know the true story behind the legend of the great Kung Lao, because I was present and trained him to make his legend a reality. Then what is the story of my great ancestor? Kung Lao asked. Eons ago, the known six realms were at war, and so nearly destroyed each other in the process, Raiden explained. So the highest authority in the universe, the Elder Gods, my subordinates decided to maintain control of the chaos and form a tournament that decided the fate of all the realms. This tournament and has been forever known as Mortal Kombat. The rules are quite simple. Every 5,000 years, the tournament is held between in which two realms always depend on the issue at hand. However, like fate, war between the realms grows seemingly greater and greater. For whichever realm wins ten total tournaments each is granted their greatest desire within the restrictions of the laws of the realms by the Elder Gods, and the most common prize is the right to merge the two opposing realms, with the winning realm acting as the leader of the newly fused realm. Eventually, Mortal Kombat would find its way to Earthrealm, 
but a powerful sorcerer stood against the threat that Earthrealm's rival Outworld posed to them. This sorcerer would be the first human to ever win mortal combat, and so was chosen as the champion of the Elder Gods, and was gifted the ability to travel to the other realms in order to ensure that the rules of mortal combat were followed to the letter, as any violation would lead to the Elder Gods intervening as they see fit. If you don't mind me asking, is it not possible that with their champion, a fight would be rigged by the Elder Gods in his favor? asked Liu Kang. No. Whether this champion won or lost was still out of the Elder God's hands, Raiden stated. However, he was granted access to great power by the Elder Gods, even going as far as learning how to drain the soul out of another living being. The sorcerer was considered the only mortal to have access to the secrets that only the gods were permitted to learn. But the leniency of the Elder Gods would create a grander threat. The Sorcerer would gain so much power that he felt beyond the Elder Gods' laws, and so cheated in his next Mortal Kombat tournament. The Elder Gods noticed this, and so I was sent to deal with him. But even Elder Gods possess souls, meaning he could become the most powerful being in all the realms with the souls of the Elder Gods in his grasp. All seemed lost until the day I found a great champion named Kung Lao. At first, he was nothing more than an attendant at this very temple, long before it ever became an academy. But I saw something in him that even the Elder Gods denied, and so I trained him. Finally, at the next Mortal Kombat tournament for Earthrealm, the great Kung Lao would defeat the Sorcerer and save Earthrealm from his rule. In the end, the sorcerer was exiled as a result of Kung Lao's wish from the Elder Gods, his prize, and so the sorcerer was sent to be exiled within Outworld for all of eternity, and thus the legend of the great Kung Lao was born. But that's not all there is, is there? asked Kung Lao. No. The legend states that the great Kung Lao died in battle at the hands of a four-armed beast. I assume that must have been from a previous tournament, Barai Cho stated. Yes, the great Kung Lao's prowess in the mystical arts allowed him to live for another 5,000 years, and so entered the next tournament, which was another threat from Outworld. So after so long. Forgive me, Lord Raiden, but I must ask, why would the sorcerer fight for Outworld if he comes from Earthrealm? asked Liu, Liu Kang. The sorcerer was challenged by the great Kung Lao, and so needed a new representative realm to participate, Raiden replied, as per the rules. In truth, Earthrealm has always been seen as the weakest of the realms, not even worth anyone's time, at least that is until Outworld sought to conquer it. If I may ask, Lord Raiden, why do you think that is? asked Boraicho. I'm afraid not even I know. This hasn't happened since Outworld's former Emperor, which, as you may know, was, oh, died eons ago. So then that just leaves as to why you've arrived. If the tournament is arising soon, then that must mean you've come here to recruit warriors to Earthrealm's aid, asked Boraicho. Yes, Raiden replied. Throughout these fi past 5,000 years, I've been traveling the realm elms under the orders of the Elder Gods, and things have been getting hectic, especially in Outworld. Sadly, I arrived too late to prevent a counteractive strike from the enemy. Now I get it, Boraicho claims. The attack on the temple was to ensure we didn't have any warriors to spare, beating us before the tournament even started. They knew we had warriors even they, fe they would fear. Correct. Raiden said. But, but can't and that be considered cheating? asked Kung Lao. What happens before Mortal Kombat is out of the Elder God's hands. It's what happens during the tournament that matters to them, Raiden states. Then perhaps it's time we got down to bit business then, Liu, Liu Kang interjects. You told us that the winner of the tournament is granted a wish by the Elder Gods. That's why you said there is a way to bring back Kung Jin. We can revive him with the power of the Elder God. 
Odds, can't we? Reed and nods in acknowledgement. Outworld killed my best friend, and I won't, won't take that lying down. If there is any chance at bringing him back, then I, I volunteer myself as a combatant. If you're going, then I'm going too, Kung Lao interjects. Kung Jin was also my nephew, and any attack on my family is a personal attack against me, and I won't tolerate it. Raiden looks at the two fighters, impressed by their determination. Very well, says Raiden. Mortal Kombat is to take place on an island far from here, as was stated by Earthrealm's challenger Outworld. I don't mean interrupt, but don't you think you'll need more than two fighters? asked Boraicho. Indeed. Luckily, I've already thought ahead, Raiden claims with a smile. To be continued. And with that, the prologue comes to an end. Boy, that was a long one. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and put down in the comment section below on what you thought about this video. Until the next part of the story, I'm JT Anime, and I'll check you guys later.